Bé, molt bona tarda a tothom. Funciona tot molt bé, sense problema, sentim. Aquí hi ha una veu que s'haurà de treure dels altaveus, em sembla. Bé, estic molt content i molt agraït que hàgiu vingut. Sempre hi ha una oferta múltiple, molt forta, i a més fa fred, i per tant, doncs, i a més a més, Després podrà veure aquesta conferència a YouTube per un preu mòdic de zero i, per tant, doblement agraïts per la vostra visita aquí avui. I hem dit, mira, comencem ja. Sé segur que encara ha d'arribar alguna persona, però no és qüestió de perjudicar els que heu arribat puntualment. I estem davant d'un britànic i tampoc no podem jugar massa brut amb el tema de l'horari. Estic especialment content que hagi acceptat la nostra invitació el doctor Jeremy Evers, que la invitació ve arran d'una participació seva en un congrés a Belfast a la primavera d'aquest any, en què va fer una presentació que va inspirar molt els assistents en aquell congrés i que vaig pensar que segurament molt modificat, no sé, pel títol ja veig que ha traduït una bona part de la presentació que farà, almenys la part visual, que seria molt interessant també que es fes aquí a Catalunya per estimular també un debat no tan teòric com pràctic. El Jeremy Evers és llicenciat en idiomes moderns i té després un doctorat en què entra en el tema de les polítiques lingüístiques i els obstacles per al desenvolupament del bilingüisme i del multilingüisme en general. I té un perfil, jo diria que molt buscat i a la vegada poc freqüent, que és una persona amb formació lingüística, amb una gran formació i interès en informàtica i en noves tecnologies i a la vegada s'ha especialitzat i treballa de fet per un organisme de planificació lingüística. Ell treballa per la Welsh Language Board, que vindria a ser la Secretaria de Política Lingüística, tot i que potser no té un rang tan directament polític com té la nostra secretaria, en què el secretari és un polític que forma part de l'estructura directa de govern. Això li permet a ell de dirigir el que jo crec que li agrada més, que és la recerca. Té aquest interès inquisitiu d'anar a investigar amb les fronteres del coneixement. Això ha servit molt a la Welsh Language Board, que ho vaig dient en anglès, però hauria de dir-ho en anglès, però aleshores el pobre intèrpret aquí agraïm la seva feina, sempre curada i exacta, doncs li faríem una mica més complicat. Per tant, no vull allargar-me més, només comentar que teniu a la vostra disposició aquests dossiers. Aquest recull és el segon volum d'un recull de documents de caràcter internacional que creiem que són interessants per a qualsevol persona que vulgui anar-se documentant sobre temes de multilingüisme. Com sabeu, la càtedra de multilingüisme Lingua Mon Woc es dedica a temes de multilingüisme, com és natural i obvi, i el dia que no sigui així entre Lingua Mon i Woc diran a veure vostès què fan perquè el vostre tema és el multilingüisme. Aprofito aquí, amb tota sinceritat, ens fareu favors si creieu que teniu companys, biblioteques, centres de documentació, aquí els aniria bé tenir exemplars d'aquest recull, agafeu-ne a la sortida, cosa que no diria si tota la sala estigués rebossant de gent. Ens aniria molt bé que ens ajudéssiu a la sortida a repartir aquesta documentació internacional. I per altra banda tenim una documentació dins els dossiers que podreu mirar 
al vostre gust una informació sobre aquesta conferència, una reproducció, crec que és, del text que es presentarà a pantalla i també una petita informació al final d'una, no sé si ho has vist tu, Jeremy, el Jeremy, a part de parlar, òbviament, anglès, italià, francès, una mica d'anglès i tot, com ho trobareu, bretó, parla un català bastant més bo del que ell confessaria. Gràcies, em sembla que un ajut que li va permetre d'entrar en la nostra vida. Si, com sigui, aquí, cap al final, recollim un un escrit que circula per internet aquests dies amb una invitació a tothom de fer l'ajustament de la configuració dels ordinadors personals per, diguéssim, visibilitzar més l'ús del català a internet, la qual cosa ha permès, per exemple, que el translategoogle.com hagi incorporat l'opció del català com una de les 40 llengües principals del món. Depèn de nosaltres que el català continuï sent de les 40 llengües més importants del món amb internet. Depèn de nosaltres perquè si no fem constar la catalanitat lingüística dels usuaris d'internet doncs quedarem superats per altres comunitats lingüístiques que entre nosaltres tenen una demografia força més important. Bé, un preàmbul molt llarg. Jeremy, the floor is yours. I aquí tens dos micròfons que deien com les taronges, dos mejor que una abans, doncs dos micròfons millor que una. Moltes gràcies, Miquel. And thank you to all of you who have braved this cold Barcelona night to attend this four-hour lecture on the relevance of C++ programming for multilingualism. Um, thank you. Um, my name is Jeremy Evis. I work for the Welsh Language Board, a government organisation based in Cardiff with offices around Wales. What I'm going to do in this presentation, in the first third of the presentation, is to give you the background, sociolinguistic background of Wales, who speaks it, who spoke it, who hopefully will speak it, and who the government wants to speak it. So, that's the shape of Wales for you. What's going on in the government? In 2003, the Welsh Assembly government published a strategy document. And it was momentous in that it contained a large number of promises and policy aspirations, one of which was the wish that the percentage of Welsh speakers went up by five percentage points. Now, that's a substantial change since King Henry VIII uh, said that no one who held an official position in Wales could hold that position if he was a monolingual Welsh speaker. This document is called Iaith Pawb. It means everyone's language, and it gives you some idea of the policy direction that the government's taking at the moment. But last year, another policy um, document was brought out, and it's called One Wales, because in the Welsh Assembly Government, there is a coalition between the Labour Party and Plaid Cymru, the Nationalist Party. And One Wales sets out a long list of promises, and in language policy, the promises are to establish a, an internet domain, for example, Puntcat, you've had in Catalonia, they want, the, the government supports .cym. They, they support the formation of a language commissioner, of a new language act, and of many other things to support the continued growth in the status of the Welsh language. What I'll discuss later is whether growth in status is equal to ability or numbers of language speakers, and whether it is or not, whether that is equal to language use. So what I'm saying today, basically, is it can be summed up in three things. We've taken a strategic approach to technology. We're a small language. We have finite resources. We believe those resources should be reused. So if the government pays for language technology, it should be available free to the public, and so should its component parts. 
for example, we're funding speech technology, um, speech recognition, the speech engine, the components of that speech engine will be available on the web for other developers to reuse. The same thing has already happened um, with the speech synthesis project. That speech corpus is available for academics to use, to reuse on the web. Now, that sounds very open source, and open source can produce quite some quite extreme reactions. So, if one of the questions is, as I've been asked already today, is Microsoft evil and is open source good? The answer is, not necessarily. In fact, the answer is no. Because our policy is, whatever software you choose to use, you should be able to do that in the language of your choice. And you shouldn't have to pay. The government might have to pay something, but if the government pays something, then all those component parts should be available. But the government doesn't pay Microsoft, because Microsoft pays. So that's the strategic view. We also came up against an enormous resistance from web developers, from public bodies, saying, we don't know how to do it, it's impossible. You can't have accent marks on web pages, it's technically impossible. Well, I think the example of uh, Spanish, Catalan, French, and many hundreds of other languages has proved that um, different. But people didn't want to do it, so we brought out a series of technical guidelines which would send you to sleep, but they now must comply with by law. So what we're seeing, slowly, the picture, isn't, the picture isn't perfect. There's a lot of work to do in language policy in Wales, but it's improving, and these guidelines tell you how to do it. For example, there should be a language switch between Welsh and English on every page. That switch should be at the top right-hand side, based on research from Quebec, Catalonia, and many other bilingual reasons, uh, regions. And one of the main things I'm going to talk about is awareness. How can someone use a technology they don't know exists? They can't. So language awareness training in technology is important. So bilingual software guidelines and standards. And what this says is language is nothing but content. Okay, maybe that's slightly controversial. But technology can enable you to have a website simultaneously updated in 20 languages. I was at Linguamon earlier on today. They've got some fantastic websites in multiple languages. And I will not accept an excuse from any organisation who says they cannot do one in two. Language is nothing but content. The software is there. It gives you the architecture to fill it with English and Welsh, Catalan and Spanish, or Breton and Klingon. It's there. So, computer very, very slow. We've looked at what's gone on all over the world. We've taken, we've done a lot of desk research into best practice in multilingual technology. And then what we said is, okay, we, we consulted with the public, with the, with the 450 organizations that have statutory language schemes under the Welsh Language Act. And we said, look, this is what we're proposing. What do you think? And they told us what they thought, and we said, thank you very much. We rewrote the document, and then we said, you've got to do it. This was, this was set out at a statutory circular under the Welsh Language Act, which is bureaucratic language for something they must do. So, we are quite eager to share these findings, to share these guidelines, because language is only content. What will work for English and Welsh will work for Basque and Spanish. We're quite eager to work with Linguamon in the Base de Datis de Bonas Practicas, which I saw earlier on today, an excellent way of learning what to do, what not to do. And we work with all these organizations and have signed agreements with some of them to, so they can copy our documents. The Irish government has taken our standards for bilingual technology and they're using it for Irish and English. Great, superb, don't have to read about the wheel. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is give you a brief description, a very, very brief description of the history of Welsh. I'm, the standard written language exists, says he, because of a translation of the Bible. I talked about Henry Tudor. He banned anyone who was monolingual in Welsh from holding public office. Didn't ban the Welsh language. His daughter, Elizabeth I, authorised a translation of the Bible into Welsh, believing that that would 
lead people into subtractive bilingualism through religion and that they'd all speak English in the end. Um, it didn't work for a few centuries, but if you look at the language here, that's a map of Wales. The darker the colour, the higher percentage of Welsh speakers, people who self-declare that they can speak Welsh in a census. So in 1961, the vast majority of the land mass of Wales was majority Welsh speaking. But the Welsh language has suffered a very, very, very severe territorial loss. So in those 30 years, the Welsh language has changed from a community language to an urban language. I'm not saying that's good. In fact, I'm saying that's bad. And lots of the literature says that's bad. And it poses a different set of problems for language planning. But Cardiff is the largest Welsh-speaking city. Maybe I'm just trying to be controversial. So, the history of the Welsh language is similar to many other languages with a similar demographic situation. And to many of the regional minority languages of Europe or the rest of the world. The development of the nation state said that la France, une et indivisible, or one language, one state. What do you mean someone speaks Breton over there? Well, we'll get rid of that, we'll, we'll stop that. They speak Welsh? No, no, it's immoral. It's immoral to speak Welsh and it corrupts people's moral fibre. So we'll, we'll not allow it in the school system oh, beyond a certain degree and then we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll starve it of all support and we'll stigmatise it. Happened here, I believe. Happened in many, many places. And over a century, that's what happened. So the line below is the number of Welsh speakers, which at the start of the last century was half the population of Wales. Again, percentages and raw numbers are very, very different because during this time, you've got the tail end of the Industrial Revolution, you've got a lot of immigration from England and other parts, which I'll show you. But to summarise, a long history of decline, slowing down in, from 1971 to 1991, decline, stopping, and raising slightly in 2001, if you believe the people. So let's have a look. The three to four year olds in Wales, the greener the colour, the darker the green, the more percentage of Welsh speakers we have in the area. So what you'll see, the west and the north of Wales are where the highest percentage of Welsh speakers have, uh, are at the moment. So this is the population of Wales, three to four year old, not affected by large by the education system. So let's have a look. What happens when the education system kicks in? The education system in Wales is producing an awful lot more numbers of Welsh speakers. Is there language use? Is that a net gain? Is one second language speaker produced through a Welsh medium education system equivalent to one first language speaker? Will they use it in all domains? Discuss. Welsh has been a compulsory subject up to the age of 16 for several years now, and some people have argued that parents who don't speak Welsh have declared their children as Welsh speakers because they study it in school, up until the age of 15, and look what happens then. 15, it goes, and it goes, and it goes. So there's a dip in the middle of the age profile. and. Again, you see a changing to the 75-year-old 75 75-year-old 75 group, a lack of um, intergenerational language transmission. There's a lot of people in Wales who, within living memory, haven't spoken Welsh to their children because they thought it had no economic value, they thought it was a badge of shame, they thought their Welsh wasn't good enough, and for many other reasons which, with which you will be familiar. That is the overall percentage in the 2001 census. That's the percentages. But Cardiff is there. There are 300,000 people who live in Cardiff. That's 11% of the population of Cardiff that speak Welsh. 30,000 people, sorry, or 33,000 people in Cardiff speak Welsh. That is larger in number than people in the top percentage area. So it's a figure, it's the same. But beware.
because immigration from other areas is responsible for those percentages. Beware, beware. Of all those people in Wales who were born in Wales, this is the number who can speak Welsh. So it's different. Oops, it's different to that. That's everyone. That's the people born in Wales. That's 2001. And the immigration. People born outside Wales, in Scotland, in England, in Spain, anywhere outside Wales, that's the percentage in 1991. That's the percentage in 2001. So the Welsh Language Board and many of the local authorities have been cooperating on centres for latecomers, people who come in to the school system who don't speak Welsh, to give them intensive courses, similar to that what's been happening in Catalonia. Um, the field of Welsh for adults is um, very popular with something like 21,000 registrations per year. And of those who can speak or who say they can speak, how many are competent? The, you're only the second people to have seen this. This was, pu this was published um, last week. This is a part of the language use survey, the sur survey, survey um, bet held between 2004 and 2006. And as with all regional and minority languages, the number of people who do speak it is, the number of, is less than the number, or fewer than the number, who can speak it. So what we got here, in the core Welsh area, so that's North and West Wales, which I talked about, the majority of people declare themselves to be competent. But in the low percentage areas, Monmouthshire technically didn't used to be part of Wales anyway, but it, it, it has been for several decades now. 25% of those people who say they can speak Welsh in Gwent declare themselves to be competent speakers of Welsh. So that, again, is related to what I said about the census and Welsh as a school subject, etc. Now, this is an interesting one. There, not fluent. Let's see if I can get it. On the left-hand side there, those are non-fluent Welsh speakers. Look for the yellow. Yellow is the percentage of both groups who speak Welsh every single day. So, surprise, surprise, the more fluent you are, the more likely you are to speak Welsh every day. But the census doesn't tell us that because we have no language use data in the census. So we have to commission our own um, research and that's available on our website. So, again, the same figures by county. And again, in the lower percentage areas, we have exactly the same pattern before of people who speak Welsh every day. I'll let you read this on your own. There are many economic advantages of bilingualism in Wales. Most, th this is um, a recueil of several different sources. One research report from the University of Wales, Aberystwyth, as it was then, says that Welsh speakers, on average, where is it, um, can earn a percentage, a substantial percentage differential. And that is important for perception. Lots of parents send their children to Welsh medium schools because they think they're going to get a better job. I won't go through that in detail. But there are many, many, many barriers to language use. Why don't people speak it? Because it's rude to speak Welsh in front of people who don't. You had a campaign on that in Catalonia 10 or 15 years ago. And again, you don't know who else speaks it. So we had a campaign on that and we wear a badge. Not um, people in public service or who provide Welsh language services wear a badge. And that's just been relaunched. It's called Yaith Gwaith, Working Welsh. So when I go to the supermarket, I can, every time I go out in Cardiff, Cardiff is a very low percentage of Welsh speakers, I can guarantee we've got Welsh back me up here. Every time you go out in Cardiff, you can guarantee you're going to speak English to someone who can speak Welsh, but you don't know. 
in every shop. So that badge system is meant to overcome that. And it'll take time to grow. The recognition of it in the public mind will take time to grow, but it's getting there. On to technology. Our work in technology over the last couple of year, years has given us several, several principles. It's got to be easy to use. There's no point in having a bolt-on program to enable you to create content in Welsh. It should be there already. You shouldn't have to do anything, says he, um, for devilment. You've got, it's got to be familiar. You've got to be familiar with it. You've got to be able to switch between Welsh and English, or between Spanish and Basque, or between Irish and English. Pay attention to detail, because lots of the early websites which were done, for example, in Welsh, they didn't pay enough attention to detail, so you couldn't switch language. And every time you wanted to switch language, you went to a different page, or you went back to the start of the site, or you didn't know what page was available in Welsh and what wasn't, and you didn't know what wasn't there. Sorry, I'm a civil servant. I talk in riddles like this. So pay attention to detail. And it shouldn't cost the end user one penny. As I said, the government might have to pay, Microsoft have to pay, Apple might have to pay, but you shouldn't have to pay. And we really must smash a few myths because whenever we've been talking to the public, the awareness is low, the fear is high. It's technology. People are scared of technology. And they're scared of using technology in unfamiliar situations. And some people are scared of using the Welsh language in situations with which they're not familiar. Hey, it's diglossia. That language is meant to be used there. That language is, is meant to be used there. So there's a few myths which I shall run through. But we've got example, we've got this boring technical document which will send you to sleep, which will give technical staff the ability to provide a perfectly adequate language choice, a plain, simple and clear language choice. It's all about normalisation, making it normal. You know about that here as well. So why is it important that languages should be switchable? Well, I talked about the census. There are 80,000 more Welsh speakers now in 2001, according to, uh, apart, compared with 1991. The prognosis that we have shows that that number is going to increase. I'm talking about people who say they can, not about people who do. Mm -hmm. I told you about the government's policy objective. The government wants the, number, the percentage of Welsh speakers to go from 21% to 26%. It's a very honourable policy objective. But of all Welsh speakers, if we take Welsh speakers as 100%, only, well, under half of them live in homes where everyone can speak Welsh. Mm -hmm. So, of those people who say they can speak Welsh, their lives are bilingual. They're not monolingually Welsh. Of school children, people of school age, one in five, one in five people who speak Welsh, of school children of school age, mm -hmm. live in homes where everyone can speak Welsh. And you'll see that here. Those are the results for 1991 census. Those are the results for the 2001 census. So you can see that the use of the school system as a medium to create more numbers of Welsh speakers comes through to the census in a certain, well, it, comes, it does show through to the census. Now that's why it's important that if you use Microsoft Office in English, that software, that websites, this is Microsoft Office. I could be talking about a website I could be talking about Open Office. I could, could be talking about Apple, although Apple hasn't done anything in Welsh yet, unfortunately. But it's important that software, the architecture, that can be switched between English to Welsh, to Catalan, to Indonesian, to Basque, to, to Norwegian, to anything. Because it's easy. It enables you. Technology is enabling you to offer language choice. We've got predictive text in Welsh, but it's not there as standard on the phone. It is there as stand standard on some phones in Catalonia. Um, we have created a Java applet, a little program which you can download. So <coughs> now you can walk into a lamppost in Welsh as well when you're walking down the street texting. But again, because it's not pre-installed on your phone, the number of people who are aware of it, 
are using it. People are scared. How many people, how many of you download programs onto your phone? So it's a matter of convincing the um, manufacturers of mobile telephony, lteomobilcat.cat, fantastic. The purchasing power of the Generalitat, that worked. That hasn't happened so far in Wales because presently the mobile operators are not covered under present legislation. So what's available in Welsh? Microsoft Office, Open Office, Firefox, loads and loads and loads. For such a small language, there is a vibrant community of voluntary translators. We have a smaller version of Soft Catalan. Soft Catalan has done fantastic work in translating software into Catalan. And I remember attending a presentation which you, Miquel, organised from uh, Jordi Mas and Oscar del Pozo, just exuding um, enthusiasm for technology. It's fantastic. But even open source software is subject to these myths because people think it costs too much. Rubbish. It doesn't cost a penny to use your computer in Welsh. This one's more difficult. Number two, it's too difficult to use it in Welsh. Um, how do you know you haven't used it in Welsh yet? How would you know? You don't know until you try. Does, is this ringing from, does this sound familiar in Catalonia? Mm -hmm. Myth number three, and oh, now no, we can't use it because our technicians don't parl, don't parla. <laughs> no la podem fer servir, les nostres tècnics no parlen català, no, no, no parlen gales. Um, but it doesn't matter because technicians can switch between Welsh and English very easily. Our school, our office, our home is bilingual, so I can't share a computer with someone who doesn't speak Welsh. Um, my wife doesn't speak Welsh. I do, my, my kids do, um, but my wife doesn't, so the computer's got to be in English. Rubbish, because you can have a profile in Welsh, you can have a profile in English. If I were married to someone Catalan, and my, our, our kids spoke Catalan and Welsh, I could have my computer in Welsh, my wife could have it in Catalan, my kids could have it in Catalan or Welsh, or they could have windows in, in Catalan and office in Welsh. It's completely interchangeable. So that, again, is a myth. Oh, no, 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 it's impossible because in our organisation you can't put this, um, this technology on a network. Um, rubbish. And that one is hard because lots of the technicians in large organisations are inherently conservative. I won't name organisations, but they don't want to change their standard build, they don't want to change the setup. Because it works fine now, thank you very much, and we don't want to put this unfamiliar software on um, because it might break it. Well, do you really think Microsoft are going to release software which is going to break Microsoft network software? It's a matter of one click or two clicks for these network technicians, and they can give it to everyone in an organisation. The Welsh Assembly Government is making this technology available to the 6,000 people who work there. They only had to click two things. Um, do your organisations make the Catalan versions of Windows, Open Office, Microsoft Office, available to you without you having to ask? Rhetorical question. Mm -hmm. I know what the answer is in Wales. Myth number six. No se prove la lengua ex. El galés, la tecnología es más complicada. Again, psychology. People don't believe their Welsh is good enough to use in unfamiliar situations. Well, everything is in the same place. File is in the same place as fail in Welsh. Edit is in the same place as golagi in Welsh. Or Catalan. I used a computer in work this afternoon. Everything was in Catalan. Everything was in the same place. It wasn't a problem. So... What we've done again is to smash this myth, we've created a little program which gives you all the vocabulary anyway. So now you don't have that excuse either. If you don't know the word and you don't know what was in that position in English, you can, you can just use, uh, you can look it up. And we also tested the translation, not from a point of view of accuracy, but from a point of view of friendliness as well. And we changed some things. We did a lot of work with Microsoft and the open source community prior to that had done a lot of work in order, because translation can be done well, it can be done badly. These translations have been done very, very well indeed. 
and you've got um, we, trans we trialled it with a television presenter, a retired civil servant, a businesswoman and an educational consultant for one of the counties and they all loved it, they gave us suggestions, we, tra we tra changed some stuff and then we rolled it out to the public. It's easy, it's really good. So we've got Firefox in Welsh, we've got Open Office in Welsh, we've got a bilingual switchable version of Open Office in Welsh, we've got Google in Welsh and I totally agree with what you said at the start because if you haven't done it you can all go home tonight and change your browser settings mm -hmm. so it gives you the Catalan uh, version first. It's called the fallback chain. Give me Catalan first, give me Spanish second, give me English third, or give me Welsh first, give me Catalan second. It's there. That's in Microsoft Internet Explorer, that's in uh, Firefox, that's in Safari, and, and it can be done. It's very, very easy. So if, if I can give you one action point is to go home and do that tonight. I'll give you two action points. Ask people in work how you get the Catalan versions of the software if you don't use it already. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't cost anything. And see if they come up with the excuses I gave you there. So what we did, we created a CD to give to people. People didn't know it existed, how a CD, put it on. This will auto Welshify, it'll, make your, it'll automatically, magically make your computer Welsh language. Um, and it'll automatically change your browser settings to Welsh and it'll automatically let your English-speaking husband have your computer in English as well. Um, it's gone well. We're releasing another version for um, Office 2007 and, and Windows Vista, um, for which Microsoft paid. But I think the first and foremost uh, priority for any language in the field of information technology, if they have been codified, and Welsh has long been codified, so has Catalan, is computer programs to enable people to create content in that language. And that's why the Welsh Language Board, back almost 20, almost 20 years ago now, created Cysyll. Cysyll is a grammar checker. The Celtic languages have initial, initial consonant mutations, de depending on the situation of the word. So, for example, a place named Cardiff in Welsh is, is Caerdydd but it can also be Gairdiv, it can be Chairdiv, it can be Mhairdiv. People tend to get confused with these grammar rules. The computer will do it for them now. People think the vocabulary is limited, so we give them a vocabulary tool, an online dictionary. You've got this in Catalan as well. Computer training. People felt they need... People are scared of computers. People need training in how to use computers in whatever language. If you provide the computer training in... Welsh, using Welsh language interfaces or using Catalan in interfaces, that helps the process of demystification. Demystification is what it's all about because people tend to want to believe that they won't be able to use, well, won't be able to use a computer, and they definitely won't be able to use a computer in Welsh, although they've never tried. And that's what this little program, which we wrote to the Welsh Language Board, and is freely available on our website. It's the Canolfan Rheoli Aeth. It's a language control centre, and I don't know how many Welsh speakers we've got in the audience, I know there are some. If you haven't loaded it on your machine, then do it, because it'll enab enable you to switch very easily between Welsh and English in all those programmes listed there. It does Windows as well, Vista, etc. But it does more than that. It, if you're a technician, it gives you technical instructions on how to mount the language packs on server technology. It tells you how to type accents in Welsh and it gives you all the vocabulary. Basically, this is a myth-busting programme. It takes away all your excuses. It normalises Welsh on your computer. Can you detect a certain amount of frustration in my dealing with the Welsh-speaking public over the years? So we've done... Um, Microsoft have been a pleasure to work with. Absolute pleasure. We are part of the local language programme. They phoned us up. They said, hello, we are Microsoft. Um, we'd like to make our software available to you in Welsh and we'd like to pay for it and we'd like to give it away free. And it wasn't a joke. They did. Um, they, they did that and they did it again. So they've done it for two generations and over the next month or two there'll be more uh, announcements about further Microsoft software that's available. Um, again, there is a certain amount of evangelism, I suppose. Some people love Apple, some people love Microsoft, some people love open source. Our policy is, whatever computer program you use, we think that should be available in Welsh. 
so we would call upon Apple to make their software available freely in Welsh as well. Is it available in Catalan or Mac OS? Totally against uh, Apple myself. All right, okay. <laughs> Evangelism. <laughs> right. We have further myth busting. Uh, people think their Welsh vocabulary isn't good enough. In language quality surveys, people consistently rate their Welsh as poorer than their English. So, this tool, which we developed in conjunction with the British Broadcasting Corporation, is called BBC Vocab. And if you turn it on, it will give a background in yellow, and if you hover over it, you can see, oh, I don't know what the word mavurwyr means, or hover over, oh, it's students, okay. And um, this, thanks to our collaboration, will be available um, gradually on all Welsh language websites for free. So you can use it in Catalan as well, technically. The, te the technology just takes a web page, goes, right, that's in a dictionary, that's in a dictionary, oh, stick some yellow there. Very, very simple, very effective indeed. Um, I said Mac OS is not available in Welsh, it's not. But we do recognise that Apple Macintosh is used for the publishing industry in certain sections of academia. And the publishing industry in Wales, we, well, that was one of the reasons behind my trying to, um, to make grant funding available. And the spell checker, which I talked about earlier on, is now available for Apple Mac. Mm -hmm. And that's what's available, so what are we doing? I talked about the boring document, and it really is boring. So boring that we've had to boil it down to a set of a couple of questions, so that, for example, someone in the civil service can say, oh, this website, company X, you've got to make sure this complies. There's the questions, this shows how to make it comply. So there's a program going up there, and when we get the expert, when, when we get the myths, when an organisation said, look, it's impossible to make this software available in Welsh, that very rarely is the case. There are some things you can do, you can work around it. And when I or my colleagues don't know the answer, we have a panel of specialists who can give them a very, very technical answer. Mm -hmm. Application, we just need to take what exists and make it available in schools, make it available in institutions, make sure the public knows about it. So it's a program of language awareness, of awareness that these things exist, and of, of giving people the confidence to do it. And technology, lots of speech technology uh, coming up. Speech, there's a grant going on at the moment to enable speech recognition in Welsh, which again, um, you have in, in Catalan. But the question is, how many people use this technology? Um, the answer is, I don't know, but I have an idea. We, because I'm in charge of research as well, we do lots of surveys. And one of the surveys we did was with um, small and medium enterprises, mm -hmm. 500 of them. So, first of all, we asked them, do you use OpenOffice, Windows XP, Office 2003, this was before Office 2007 and, and Vista came out, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Do you use them in Welsh? There's the answer. So this is in 500 companies. You can see a very, okay, all those companies don't speak Welsh. But considering that there are 20% of the population of Wales that speaks Welsh, 500 companies here, if the population percentage was reflected, you would be expecting 100 companies mm -hmm. to use technology in Welsh. There are not 100, and there are far fewer people who use OpenOffice in Welsh or at all. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how many people use it because there's no tracking on machines. But it's safe to say that there's far fewer people than can. The same survey, how many, how many of you companies use Welsh on your websites? Well, no Welsh at all? Don't know. How would you not know that your company doesn't use Welsh? Mm -hmm. And Welsh use, so it's small. The Welsh Language Act 1993 does not directly affect the private sector. It can by contracts, but it doesn't, uh, it's not like the Lady Political Linguistica here. So, what are we going to do? Or what have we done? 
we knew that many people didn't use a technology. We knew that more people needed to use a technology. So we sent a task force. We sent groups of people out to community organisations, to the choir, to the ajuntament, to the sports club, and we gave them a presentation. And people thought, oh yeah, that's good. Um, we'll go home and do it. But they didn't. They, it was either too complicated or they forgot or they had to make dinner for the children or whatever, which is fair enough, completely fair enough. So what we've done now, we have secured more funding. We've got a £40,000 project going on in Cardiff, Carmarthenshire, Gwynedd, Conway at the moment, to go to small and medium enterprises, to schools maybe, um, to community groups, and to install the Welsh language interface for them to do it for them, and it works very, very well. And the results of that show that when the technology is installed for you, everyone loves it. Almost everyone loves it. Oh, it's great this exists. What, they paid for it? It's free, you're giving me this for free? No, there must be a catch. Um, it is free. Now what we need, what we found, again, with the same myths coming through, Oh no, you can't do it in this organisation because the server is locked. Well, yeah, it's true the server is locked, but you can unlock the server as well and you can put the technology on there. Um, people found that the download process was too complicated. It's from the Microsoft Download Centre. It's the same download uh, centre which, from which you download the Catalan language packs. One of the recommendations that came back was that the technology should be pre-installed on machines. I know that the Governor of Vice Basco, um, the BBC Consejería de Política Lingüística, there has got an agreement with Dell so that computers coming to the Basque Country will have the language packs pre installed. Maybe the same in Catalonia, I haven't been able to find that out yet. So people need to build self confidence, they need advice, they need to know what's available. One of the things that the this Provided uh, divulgación said, but you need to go back and find out how people are acting. Are they still using the Welsh language interface? And we did. We went back, and, and they are. We keep in contact with them, and we take their feedback back to Microsoft or to the, the people who write the style guides. Style guides. They said we need a portal for Welsh language technology. Not sure if I agree with that because there's one already. Um, but people, it needs to get into schools. People need to be used to it, it needs to be put there for them. They need to be asked or it needs to be there. It's about normalising the language. Marketing, marketing, penso local, plan para partrenents, stakeholder plan. That's my main task from now until the end of March, is to see where this technology can be taken. Okay, can we use that piece of legislation to put it in that kind of organisation? Can I use that influence to put it in that sector there? So a list of where we can influence to get the technology there. Because remember, it doesn't cost anything. So what could be the problem for using Welsh language technology, which doesn't cost anything in a Welsh medium school? I don't understand. What does the public think of it? Um, surprise, surprise. I told you, the software has been architectured. It looks exactly the same. It's only the language that's, that's changed. Of course it is. It's easy to use, it's simple. See, I told you. I like that it's possible to change languages, and when using programs like Word, changing the interface language separately so you can have... Um, I, I used a Welsh language version of PowerPoint to create this PowerPoint in Catalan. I have a Catalan language pack on my computer, so I could spell check. I didn't write the translations myself. My Tipuj Dival very kindly supplied the translations free of charge um, for me. So, um, my turn, honey. The responses that come, I'm not editing these, well, I am editing them, but they were all positive. Changing the spell check from Welsh to English was easy. Well, you know, I've got a Catalan spell check on my Welsh thing. At last, it's easy for to learn to learn too. It's handy for me at work because I share a computer with a colleague who doesn't speak much. It's lovely to see the computer opening with the word Kreuzer. Welcome. And the rest are, are in your packs. So, high time we had something like this in Welsh. 
it would be handy to be able to send an email over. Changing the user account is good and simple. I would be prepared to recommend the Lounge Control Centre. And I was talking with my dear over lunch, and it's actually four years ago today that the first language interface packs were launched for Microsoft Office 2003 and Windows XP. We have come along, way. lots of organisations do, the Welsh Assembly Government, other organisations, but there's a long way to go as well. So, I'm presuming you forget a man, um, you should cut um, language technology. Oh, too much, too much. I'm not going to talk much about translation, but translation technology exists. You have very advanced machine translation in Catalan. That may be coming to Welsh. In fact, there's work being done in the Universidad de Alicant on Welsh language machine translation. Mm -hmm. But the translation industry in Wales has grown very, very quickly. And a recent survey was done by Canal Van Bedwyr of the University of Wales, Bangor, and it said that translators didn't use translation technology, memorias de traducción. It just remembers trans stuff you translate as you know, and gives you suggestions, so it makes your life easier, deletes repetition. Mm -hmm. So there's a problem with all type of, of technology, awareness raising. Mm -hmm. There's a problem with use of Welsh language services because people don't know they're available. So at the start of December, you're having a sneak preview of one of the uh, new campaigns. It's called Magenti Dewis, you have a choice. But it's all about knowing you have a choice. Mm -hmm. Not about asking for that choice. The choice should be offered to you according to the law. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so interactive services, this is the UK government inland inland revenue of um, revenue and customs as it's now. Her Majesty's Re Revenue and Customs as it's now called. Isenda. Isenda. Is that Zemba. what it's called here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well you can you can hate them in Welsh. No? Mm -hmm. So Principality Building Society, there's lots available. There's lots you can buy. You can uh, apply for your driving license, for your tax list, you can pay your taxes in, in Welsh. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the conclusions are the same. Use these principles, which I talked about at the start. The principles are easy. You've got to make the change. You've got to smash the myths. Mm -hmm. Confidence is the key to use of language technology. If people don't believe they can use some, they can't use something, then this is my truth, tell me yours. People's individual truth is their own truth, the key of, of counselling. Everyone's reality is their own, and it's real. But if you do make, smash those myths, you can make very, very quick gains, as you've seen. For two clicks in the Welsh Assembly Government, 6,000 people can use this language technology all day long if they choose. Mm. But they've got to make, they've got to know it's there. So you've got to promote, promote, and promote again. And the opportunity, you know about this, the opportunity to use a language leads to differences and evolution in the belief about the place that that language holds in society. And that can affect fluency, how ready someone is to use a language. In fact, you know quite a lot about this one, Mikael, <laughs> because you wrote it. It's Mikael Strubel's Catherine Wheel mm -hmm. of language policy. So. The fact that Open Office is available in Welsh, that Microsoft have paid, got massive publicity at the start. People, well, why, why, why do Microsoft want to pay for Welsh language? Because, you know, well, it's a dying language, isn't it? Well, obviously not. And that has changed perceptions of the Welsh language. Mm -hmm. So that's there in the Catherine Wheel again as well. And I said at the start, it's only content. It's nothing but content. You can slot any language into a um, framework which is provided by technology. <coughs> it's a slight oversimplification because you've got confidence, you've got awareness to deal with as well. But I hope that that's been interesting for you. I am willing to take your questions, but for the moment, thank you. Thank you. <coughs>